Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today I'm going to talk about one of the best killers when it comes to healers, muskets, bows, anyone with light armor in general. It's just really, like I said, a one-shot build that does so, so well in many situations that are small scale. So here we can see the sword and shield and hammer is not just for wars. You can see the combo he's laying down, and I'm trying to dodge roll this entire time without any success. He takes me 100 to 0 very, very quickly. I'm running about 200 constitution here on my build, as good guy is not even on his 300 con build. So 300 con, he's going to actually gain more CC duration as well. Realistically, it would only buff this build because you're going to lose a little bit of damage, but you're going to keep me CC'd for even longer, giving him even more room for air. He also can go heavy, which gives him more CC duration as well, which is just crazy to think this isn't the max, even close to the max CC duration that he can get with this build. Also, imagine going the Shockwave Rend, which he wasn't going, and so many other great perks as well. So we'll talk about all those here in just a second, but I want to showcase what it looks like from my point of view now. So for this example, we're actually going to be going light armor just to get that extra damage. We're not going to be going for that extra CC duration just because we want to showcase what it looks like for light armor users without any of these perks. Not Sundering Shockwave, not any of the sword and shield or hammer perks. And this is a very, very basic build. We're not doing anything special here. And all level 60s can probably do this exact thing. All you need is 20 weapon mastery and level 60 you'll be able to jump right in and start doing these combos. So typically you're going to go from a shield rush to a shield bash, then into a shockwave. From there you're going to take the wrecking ball, clear out, and then finally finishing them off with a long leaping strike. You can see here, we're kind of uh, just going with it, right? We're not doing the abilities in the correct combination, but you can still see how strong this is even when things go south and you don't hit the right abilities or you miss something. So this build isn't just strong when you hit them all in that order. As you can see here, this guy actually had even less health than a typical player in PvP probably, but you can see with the shield bash into shield rush into a shockwave into a clear out, that's all it took. We didn't have to use the leaping strike. We didn't even have to use wrecking Ball. So this guy's definitely going light, probably not too much con, but you can see how strong this build is because you're going to be able to run into these people a lot in New World. When you're running into arenas, life staff users typically don't have a ton of health. They're just able to stay alive because you give them that gap or that timing to get out of these situations. With this build, you're removing that. So now let's talk about the build itself and then jump into some of the perks. The first thing you're going to do is take a look at your gear. I'm going all light. Like we said, if you want that CC duration to be much higher but lose a little bit of damage, definitely go heavy. It's going to increase your crowd control buffs by plus 20% increased duration, which is going to be really, really strong considering this build is all about CC. We also have the attributes. Attributes is going to be a huge part of your game. If you're looking to just do a lot of damage and you don't care about the CC or duration as much because they are not running a ton of freedom or any of those reasons, you can go 300 Cons or sorry, 300 strength, and then go about 160 con, so your con food will put you up to 200, and then dump the rest, like I said, 311 strength, 160 cons, going to get you that 300 strength and 200 con build. If you are looking, though, for that CC duration, that plus 20% duration of stun, slow, and root spells, you're going to want that 300 con to really add in that CC duration. Like I said, if you're the CC tank of your team, it's not a bad idea to do exactly that. But if you're looking to one-shot people in 1v1s or small scale like 3v3, Definitely a good idea to try to get some damage as well, so maybe do uh, a combination of things with 300 con, a little less strength, but go light, or do a heavy build and add more strength than con. So you can go either way, or go all out on one or the other. Let me know in the comments what you guys decide to do. But I want to jump into some of the weapon mastery, because when we look at our weapons, there's obviously going to be a lot of different choices to take. I'm going to explain a few of them. So first off, we need Wrecking Ball. The ability has Grit, which, by the way, if you go on 300 Strength, you're going to get Grit as well, which is huge. But here, strike the ground with your Warhammer, dealing 130% weapon damage, but it knocks down your target, which is the biggest part. We need to continue to knock down the target, keep them from moving. That's why we have Shockwave. If you guys don't know what Shockwave is, you've never played against a Hammer player. We actually can see Clear Out as well. This is a nice one to go, a very nice ability, just because it applies that CC yet again. If we go back, I want to take a look at... Actually, I think it's in here somewhere. Let's take a look. Uh, where is that? The Concussion Impact. So 15% increased damage against targets affected by Warhammer debuffs. You're going to have them having debuffs all the time because you have Aftershock on them. Whenever a target is affected by a crowd control effect, they are slowed by 20% for 4 seconds, which is going to be really, really strong for many different reasons. You also have this, by the way. That's why I like to take damage in 1v1s before I start the combo. 
deal 35% extra damage for one second after taking damage. Depending on what combo you go or what use, uh, or really what kind of uh, abilities you use right after taking that damage, 35% is a lot of extra damage, so you can actually apply that to at least one ability, and it's going to help you quite a bit. Also, you can increase heavy attack damage by 15% against targets under 30% health. After this full combo, if they're still alive, they're 100% going to be under 30% health. So that's why I take this. It's going to apply that extra damage and make sure that heavy finishes them off if needed. By the way, Exhaustive Attack is another huge one to take because all Warhammer abilities apply Exhaust, which slowly targets stamina regeneration by 20% for 5 seconds. Even if you mess up your combo, they're not going very far. Next up, we want to go to the Sword and Shield. Those are just a few of the perks, and if you guys want, you guys can definitely pause the video and take a little bit closer of a look into some of these builds. But here, you deal 10% more damage to slowed foes with Opportunist, which is going to be huge because everybody's going to be slowed or CC'd at all times with this build. You have the Shield Bash, the Shield Rush, or sorry, the Shield Rush and the Shield Bash, and then of course the Leaping Strike going to be kind of that closer if you really need to finish him off or get back on top can do exactly that with the leaping strike and it applies the stagger to their target as well we're also going to take a look at the shield rush perks here or ability perks you can see on a successful hit all enemies within five meters are weakened by 10 percent for 10 seconds that's going to be huge because it weakens reduces the target's outgoing damage so if they're trying to do damage back to you they're not going to do much also on successful hit all enemies within five meters of you are slowed by 30% for 4 seconds. This is huge because this is also going to apply to slow, like I said, to all enemies within 5 meters of you because of the intimidation factor. So that's going to apply a lot more damage, of course, to the Warhammer as well because we saw, you know, actually I think it was the other one. Uh, let's see if it was here. Whenever a target is, there we go, affected by crowd control effect, they are slowed by 20% for 4 seconds. That applies with the Warhammer, and then on top of that we have the Sword and Shield. They're going to apply so much slows across the board for everybody on their team. It's going to be really, really fun for you to be running this build and just watching their team kind of fall apart slowly but surely. And I think that's going to be the main focus on Weapon Master. I might have missed a few things, but I really wanted to focus in on some of the abilities that you need to be grabbing because they all go to well or really go together very, very well. So that's going to be the attributes. That's going to be the Weapon Mastery. Let's go into the tab and take a look at the Heart Rune because Heart Runes have now just come out, and we have a lot of reasons to go different ones. I like the Fortifying Form, which basically applies more damage absorption and also many Form healing you for 75% of the Heart Rune damage. So if you need a little bit of a heal, you can get that with the Stone Form. If you're looking for even more CC, though, we all know exactly what to do there. You just go for the Grasping Vines. Grasping Vines is going to continue to keep them rooted within a 4 meter radius for 3 seconds. If you have them shockwaved already, why not throw this in there, do a little bit of damage, and then also, like I said, hold them in place even longer. Just a crazy, crazy setup here and a crazy build you can go. I also like to take these on the armor pieces. So this gem gives you actually an additional 1% damage on your melee attacks, and as well, 2% elemental damage absorption. You're going to be only countered really by going to be, uh, you know, ice mages or fire mages or void gauntlets, but typically it's going to be ice mages that are going to stop you because ice mages are going to have those ice showers, ice storms, the CC to kind of keep you away from them. For that reason, I take, like I said, the punishing elemental ward on my gear. If we take a look at the sword and the hammer, I like to take Punishing Cruel because plus 10% damage against targets with an active crowd control status effect and your melee attacks do an additional 2% damage. That's going to apply non-stop because Punishing Cruel, when they're you know in that active crowd control status effect, which is basically happening non-stop with this build, you're going to apply 10% more damage and then melee attacks 2% damage as well. Just a massive, massive upgrade for both of these weapons and that's going to be the current build status that you're going to want on your gear and then obviously gem wise on your sword and hammer as well now let's talk a little bit about some of the ability perks you're going to want on some of your gear whether you're crafting these or buying them from the shop these are very very important so the first one's very obvious you're going to want sundering shockwave of course shockwave basically inflicts a rend reducing targets damage absorption by 14 percent for 10 seconds next up we have a very important one as well empowering leaping strike the sword attack deals 31 percent additional damage to targets slowed by leaping strikes cowardly punishment upgrade 
That's going to be very, very strong at the end of your build. We also have the Fortifying Shield Rush. This one can be very good as well if you want to utilize it. After hitting a target with Shield Rush, gain Fortify, increasing damage absorption on yourself for 33% for 6 seconds. And of course, last but not least, a very important one, Penetrating Wrecking Ball. Wrecking Ball penetrates 33% of the target's armor, which is a crazy, crazy amount of armored penetration. So definitely take some of these perks. And if you want to learn more about builds like this, PvP and PvE, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. We'll continue to bring you guides, updates, and more.